In this video, you will learn what overfitting means when it comes to deep learning model development for tissue image analysis in digital pathology. Hi, I'm Alexandra Zhurev and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology. So if this is what you're after, be sure to click the bell below and subscribe to be notified every time I release a new video. This video is a part of a webinar I gave for the CL Davis Foundation. It was a part of a day seminar. It was a paid event and this webinar is good. It's good, it's like a course, but I chopped it into small pieces for YouTube and they are very specific, but if you wanna watch the whole thing, there's a link below in the description, so go ahead and you can watch the full thing for free. When I was trying to understand what overfitting means, I came across this picture. Uh, there was underfitting a little person with two small clothes, there was, uh, fitting like well fitted with normal clothes and overfitted with two big clothes and i was like i don't get it i don't get how overfitting is two big clothes well because it isn't and it wasn't a good illustration and i'm going to provide you a far better illustration in this video so let's dive into it what is overfitting is fitting too much it sounds very simple. I'm going to show you a picture. Fitting your algorithm too much to the data that you have. So it's going to perform beautifully. It's going to do a great job on what you trained it on. But then when you add new images, new data that the algorithm didn't see, it's not generalizing enough. So on the right, we have overfitting. In the middle, appropriate fitting. And on the left, underfitting. So what is underfitting? And we had this example with cartilage and non-cartilage. Let's say the uh, crosses are cartilage and the circles is the rest. So this underfitting thing is dividing our cartilage, non-cartilage in some semi-random way. And it's useless for us. Obviously, we need to do a little bit better job here. Appropriate fitting means that it is distinguishing the class we want to find, the cartilage, from the rest more or less okay. We only have two crosses with the circles. And the crucial thing here is more or less okay. We are not striving for 100% or super okay. Because when we are striving for that, we go to the third picture where there is overfitting. So in this overfitted drawing, we took out those crosses out of the set, even though this is counterintuitive. This is too much following the data that you have. It means force fitting. It's too good to be true. So we have to keep that in mind that those tools are not going to be, those tool, tools are like tests, tests saying, differentiating different classes. And there's no perfect test that is always correct. And we're going to talk about the metrics as well. So we want to have appropriate fitting so that we can generalize this algorithm. Generalize means we train on a couple of slides that we have and then new slides come and we want to use what we already developed on the new slides and we want it to work. We don't want to keep making annotations, annotations, annotations because we want to have a tool that works and this is why it has to be appropriately fitted and this is why we need to split the data in a certain way. Question to you, can we avoid overfitting like totally and is overfitting always bad? I need a couple of answers in the chat. Yes and no. Uh, yes, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. The first answer was already answering what I want to tell you. So we can get completely rid of over. We can't. That's true. Heterogeneity of study material really helps. Indeed, exactly. That's what we want to have to have a generalizable algorithm. Yes, but this question is a philosophical question. Can we avoid overfitting? And the, here we go back to this concept of this is a data-driven approach. So if we have data and we train it on data, it works on this kind of data, right? So it's overfitted by nature. So we, if we want to keep using it, we either you give the algorithm the same type of data to do predictions on, or 
we do uh, heterogeneous data sets, but this is, you can only go so far in this heterogeneity because if you want it to be generalizable for everything, you would have to feed the algorithm, the model, all the data in the world, and then next day there would be more data. So it's a vicious circle. It's a little bit of a philosophical question. Is it always bad? It depends. Because if we only have one data set that we want a nice, like count count some cells or have the area of this cartilage on those hundred slides and that's it then we don't even have to do like training set test set and validation set we only want the tool to do this with this particular data and if it does it then who cares if it's overfitted it does the job and here you go back okay would it take me longer to do this visually, to do it manually, then when I develop this kind of overfitted algorithm that I cannot use later for anything else anyway. And if it still takes me longer and I'm worse doing it visually, then I don't have to care that it's overfitted. But usually we want to have tools that are able to tackle more than one study set, more than one type of slides. That's why we feed the system heterogeneous data and we hope that it then generalizes better. You're here, so you might be interested in the full thing. Go ahead, click the link below and you can get access to the full thing for free.